In this video, we'll optimize the response of the motor using the custom tuning function in Sigma Win Plus version 7. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. Here's a quick preview. We'll go through the basic usage of custom tuning and add a notch filter in order to further increase the custom tuning feed forward and feedback levels. Then we'll look more closely at model following control, see how it works, and how to synchronize the X and Y axes with model following control gain. Once again, please follow along and we'll be able to increase the performance of this motor even further. Custom tuning gives the engineer direct access to the levels and filters of auto tuning in order to manually adjust them. This requires careful measurement and analysis of the response and an understanding of the machine and process that you're trying to tune. Often, an increase in one performance measurement results in a decrease of another, and so an acceptable balance must be found by trial and error. Because of this, you really need custom tuning only when you absolutely need the best response possible. You'll see that it can take a significant amount of time to make even a small improvement, because the auto-tuning sequence does a pretty good job. I'm connected to the remote demo with Sigma Win Plus on axis X and Y. In the tuning result table, the position settling time is already very near zero. So how can we expect any improvement in the response when it's already this good? Well, remember that the definition of settling time depends on the position completed width which we measure using this coin signal. The settling time has been zero for a position completed width of 0.1 degree. Let's change that application requirement to 0.01 degree and see if we can tune to this new requirement. So now to measure the coin signal, what a parameter has to change? It's PN522, positioning completed width. And what do we change it to? What value will give us 0 0.01 degree? Let's open up the parameters. Go to the PN 500s. And you remember we've set PN 522 to 4660, which we had calculated equals 0 0.1 degree. So let's reduce this now to 466. And that will be 0 0.01 degree. I'll write that in there. And let's see now what the settling time is with this parameter change. We'll open up program jog. And start this motor running. Open up the trace. Set it up for positioning from the start, high precision, 750 sampling time, and check the display option. Let's see what we get. And there's the response of the motor. Now the settling time is 14 milliseconds. Does that mean that the response has changed? No, the response is the same. The settling time is longer because now the position complete width is 10 times less. Now we'll use custom tuning to attempt to improve this settling time less than 14 milliseconds. Our basic usage is launch your tuning panel, go to advanced adjustment, choose custom tuning, and we'll find these levels, basically try to increase these levels, feed forward and feed back, until you can improve the response enough. Alright, let's launch the tuning from the menu, execute, advanced adjustment, custom tuning, choose the same mechanism as before, rigid model, confirm the inertia, and click start tuning. You see that there are two levels here, the feed forward and feed back. The flow chart gives an idea of what to do, it says increase feed forward until overshooting occurs then increase feedback until overshooting disappears and when the response is okay 
you are finished. And at the same time as you're increasing the response, sometimes you will need a notch filter or anti-resonance or vibration suppression filter to cancel out a mechanical resonance that previously had not been revealed with the lower response. Now for basic usage, let's see how to set up the trace for use with custom tuning. There's an auto setting called monitors positioning completion that you'll want to set. That way you can minimize the sampling time and get maximum resolution for the end of the move as you see here. Okay, so we want to look at just the end of the move. Let's go into the setup and you choose monitors positioning completion forward, click set. Now we can minimize the sampling time down to the 125 microsecond for measurement axis 103A, that's the x-axis, and OK. Let's click start to look at that. And we have the same signals as before, but what I like to do is take that position error and you can shift it up and now they're all lined up with basically the same zero. You can shift torque down also. There's these auto scales sometimes help. If you don't like the scaling, you can change it. I'm not really interested in the torque. I'll shift the torque down here. Now all the zeros are lined up. And now rather than zoom in, you can even play with these uh, scales. You know, auto scale automatically does the offset and scale, but you can uh, choose a lower value here and you'll see now it becomes more apparent what's happening with the overshoot at the very end of the move. When I go to 500 pulses per division, you see how there is an overshoot and that's why the coin signal kind of turns off and then turns back on again because all this time the motor went outside of that 466 pulse range for position complete. And that's why the flow chart here says increase the feed forward until overshooting occurs. Looks like that's already happened. And then increase feedback level until the overshooting disappears. This is the overshooting that we need to disappear by increasing the feedback level. The reason that this will work can be understood by examining how these tuning levels affect the torque, speed, and position loops. And it has to do with model following control used by tuning modes two and three. Model following control can take the inertia from the parameter that we've set, the friction which can be detected, and the compliance of the mechanism that we've selected to build a simplified model that describes the machine. Model following control then takes the position command coming into the position loop. This is the command in our case right now from program jog or from the controller when the controller is connected. And based on that position command, predicts the speed and the torque that the motor will need based on the model. This is called a feed forward, speed feed forward and torque feed forward. And that's literally the level that you are adjusting here is how much of this feed forward is injected into the speed and torque loop. If this model is accurate, then there will be very little position error and speed error in these loops. And the gains in these loops can be raised and lowered by this feedback level proportionally to their bandwidth separation in order to reduce any error between the predicted speed and torque of the model and the actual speed and torque required for the real machine. We're graphing the position error of the position loop right here. So to reduce this error, we'll need to increase the position loop gain but of course we need to also increase speed loop and torque loop bandwidths at the same time. And that's why it makes sense to do this using the feedback level. And if you are curious about the speed feed forward and a torque feed forward, you can actually graph those in the setup. You would just have to manually choose one of these data to be speed feed forward, torque feed forward. Okay, we're not gonna do that. Uh, what I will do is be sure that this sound is on to hear the move, and then let's start to turn up the feedback level. We'll go by tens. And you can hear that the motor's becoming more aggressive in its moves. And let's take a trace now. 
And you see now the settling time has come down to three milliseconds because we're staying here below 466 pulses worth of error from this point on. Measure that real quick here. Yeah, just a little over three milliseconds. Probably should zoom in if you want to be real accurate. So if a little bit was good, how about a little bit more? Let's try 200. It's really starting to chirp here, isn't it? Yeah, that even brought it down here to two milliseconds settling time. However, our torque signal might start to be... Eh, it's getting a little bit rough, isn't it? How high is too high? Got 221. 231. So you're really starting to get some buzzing here. There's obviously a limit to how high you want to go. Now our settling time is even worse, and there's all of this uh, roughness in the torque. However, sometimes what you can do is use a notch filter, and the way I recommend to do that is to first complete the custom tuning so that it's saved. And then in the menu, under the parameters section, choose edit online parameters and choose parameter 408 and 409. Just go into the setup and then you'd set here 408 and 409 are the notch filter parameters. 408 and 409. Okay. And uh, digit zero here turns on the notch filter at this center frequency. And you can hear the difference between the notch filter off and the notch filter on. And here it's centered at 5,000. If you go down too low, eventually it comes back like it did right there. And go back up. Looks like it started to get better. 36 is too low. 37. All right. I do 38, 39. Might be some trial and error, and you may have to come back to this later on if you want to increase the feedback level even more. So I'll leave it here for this machine at 3900. Now, let's see if this helped our settling time at all. Still dipped down a little bit too far, didn't it? Let's go back to custom tuning. If it's grayed out, that means there's already a window open here somewhere. Yes, okay. So let's go to advanced adjustment, custom tuning. Go through all this again, move this over, and we'll do start tuning again. I just want to see how high I can go on this feedback level. This is already very high. Got it here at 300. Let's see how that looks. Down to four milliseconds now. How high can we go? It's starting to squeak again here. I think it's probably too high. Let's bring it back down. Can we get any improvement with the tuning level up? Put it up a little bit. Still getting four milliseconds. Although one thing that you can't see with this graph is the overall position error. If we go to the setup and go back to positioning from the start with high precision trace and give it some more time like we had before. I think 750 was enough. I 
can see that a higher feed forward level will result in lower position error. Turn this up a little bit. Let's try a nice even 750, see what we get. And I could use overlapping here to compare. And here you see how the position error can uh, come down the higher that you set this tuning level. Let's just see what happens here if I turn it up a little bit more. And the position error came down a little bit more. However, it still is relatively high. And 10 to the 6, to put it in perspective, that's 1 million pulses out of a 16 million pulse encoder. So it's about 1 16th of a rotation. But remember that this is tuning mode 2, so this is optimized for positioning and position settling time, not for following the command exactly. So why don't you take a few graphs and set the tuning levels, feedback and feed forward, and see what you come up with as your best result. I played with it for a while here, and ultimately I was able to get it down to 3 millisecond settling time by turning the feedback level up higher in order to reduce this overshoot and also setting the tuning level lower again to reduce the overshoot which I felt was probably set too high from auto-tuning because we had auto-tuned with a coin signal that was much wider than it is right now. However, I do know that this will sacrifice some position error during the move but I'm not too concerned about the position error during the move. I was just trying to get the lowest possible settling time. I do have the notch filter at 4100 hertz, which you see here. And I set that using the online parameter window, like I pointed out before. I should save this graph, call it X custom tuning. And I should take another one of the whole move. Let's do that positioning from the start again with high precision. Okay, one more. And here my settling time is still given as three milliseconds. I should measure this position error a little bit more accurately here. The difference is 1.6 times 10 to the 6. Let's look at how bad the torque signal got. It looks like we're talking about 6%, so pretty high torque ripple. So you see there's always a trade-off. If you want this low settling time of 3 milliseconds, you won't also have the quietest motor and the lowest torque ripple. We're truly optimizing for the point-to-point -point move. I should save this trace too. Custom tuning number 2. Okay, let's write this down in our table. We might note that the settling time was 13 milliseconds at 0.01 degrees with the result of advanced auto-tuning and with custom tuning I got that now down to 3 milliseconds. Position error went up said 1.66 times 10 to the 6 and the torque ripple went way up to around 6% rated torque ripple. So we're wrapping it up here for custom tuning. We've measured the final result I've recorded that in the table. I've saved my traces. It's also a good idea to save those parameters. So I will save the parameters at this time. I'll just do it this way here. Save to project. Click the save button in the main window. All right, I had this floating. Save in the main window. There we go. We are saved and this is the final result for the custom tuning of the x-axis of the demo. All this time we've been tuning the x-axis, we've been using program jog, which originates in the amplifier, to send a command to just the x-axis. But remember, we wanted both the x and y-axis to be synchronized with each other when they receive this synchronized command from the controller. But right now, the model following control gain is not the same for both of these axes, and we'll see that the response is not synchronized. So we need to take care of the y-axis with custom tuning. 
just like we did the x-axis. However, for this one, why don't we use the controller command instead of program jog? All right, so let's close this up here. We cancel our program jog move. Okay, and you know, I should have clicked completed for custom tuning. So let me click completed. And you can refresh this here. We can read all the parameters in. Yeah, now we see that new model following control gain with the level of 4800. Okay, let's look at the demo. And we need to reconnect this controller with the remote I.O. The controller can just uh, reboot and it will reconnect to those servos. Soft reboot. I think we're going to jog this motor until it's zero lines up. So servo on. Jog this motor. A little more. All right, the zeros somewhat line up there. And the way this works is you turn all of the three servos on, and this puts the controller into a camming mode where the Z axis is the master and the X and Y follow it at the exact same profile. We can set the speed to 18,000 and that will make the motors move at 3,000 RPM. Like this. Let's look at the custom tuning for the B axis mechanism of rigid model. Slightly higher inertia on this one for me. And we can click start tuning. And now let's look at the trace. And in the setup, we'll choose positioning from the start with high precision, but be sure to choose the measurement axis B. Let's look at A and B together. And now let's start this trace jog the motor for a while. Okay, it's transferring the data. And while the command is the same to both servos, prove that by zooming in. The command is exactly the same, but the response is not the same. You can see which is the motor that we've tuned because the torque ripple is higher. And more importantly, the position error is also not the same. The difference between these two position errors is 3.6 times 10 to the five reference units, five or six degrees of the motor. So we can do better than that by adjusting this tuning level this is the same as model following control gain. So let's bump this down to 480. And let's take this trace again. And now we see that the response particularly the position error, it looks the same. We zoom in. It's for all practical purposes the same. And so these axes are in sync. Now the feedback levels are not the same between these two. So if we zoom into the end of the move, just by changing the scale, you can see already how that is different. This is the B axis. If you're not sure about that, you can go to the measurement axis tab. The X axis is A, B axis is Y. And so you see there is some difference between the two axes at move stop. However, it is only 500 encoder pulses of position error that may or may not be acceptable, depends on your machine. So I'll leave you to do that on your own. I think you should be able to do it. You just set the feedback level to whatever you had for the x-axis and uh, also the coin signal to 466. That was parameter PN522. 
and you may need a notch filter also. So why don't you pause it and see if you can do those three things on your own. Then I'll show you once again how I do it. So I'm going to first turn up the feedback level until I start to hear some whining from the servo motor because in my case I needed to get all the way up to 260. Okay, I'm hearing that a little bit already. So that's 260. Yeah, it got pretty bad. Let's turn that down a little bit. Complete this so that I can go into the axis B online parameters and turn on this notch filter for axis B. Take a wild guess that it'll be 4200 just like the other axis. And then get back into the advanced adjustment again, custom tuning. Start tuning again. I don't hear the sound anymore. So let's go up to 260. That'll match the other axis. Still sounds good. So I'll start a trace. It looks like I got a partial move, but I think the settling time will be the same. And as an aside, one thing you can tell here is it looks like the jog is commanding the master axis at a constant acceleration. And that's why we see this constant torque during the acceleration here. This is more like the program jog, but the cam profile has more of a smooth curve, maybe parabolic shape to the deceleration. That can also have a great smoothing effect and reduce the settling time. Now if I zoom in here, line up my zeros. Let's zoom in a little bit at that here. Yeah, look, that uh, position error just slides right into zero here, giving us a settling time of one millisecond at the most, thanks to this smooth profile. I do hope that this little training example, this demo, and this exercise we've gone through has shown how it is possible to get a very low settling time, we got one millisecond, with a load inertia of around 16 to 1. And while the position error is relatively high during the move, the motors are synchronized with each other. And more importantly for this application, they settle to within one hundredth of a degree in such a short time. Remember, the secret is in having the same synchronized command from the controller and having also the same model following control gain, PN141, in order to have a synchronized response. The feedback level is what we set to adjust the stopping portion of the move. This guaranteed synchronization means that you can use model following control in gantry systems and camming applications and while we did have the same load inertia on both of these axes, that's not a requirement. The load inertia could be different. And as long as a model following control gain is the same, the axes will remain synchronized. So in the end, it comes down to a lot of trial and error, a lot of patience, and finding a model following control gain that works for all of the synchronized axes in your system. So I'm going to save this graph I think this is one to be proud of. And this is X and Y. Custom tuning. I'll make a little comment here. Synchronized. Thank you for watching this video. For more information on Sigma 7, please go to yaskawa.com. Products. Sigma 7 Servo Products.